What is good? We are back for a, another quick edition. Going to try to keep this one a little quicker. But we are here to go ahead and discuss is Travis Etienne already on track to bust? A lot of, a lot of hate out there. There was hate pre-draft. Now, now it's all bubbling up. A lot of, a lot of stuff out there. So we want to discuss that. We have a, we have a resident Clemson fan. We'll get that out of the way right away. I am not a Clemson fan. We go, we went ahead and left Big Co off of this one. He wasn't, he wasn't feeling it. He wasn't ready for the pain. He's a South Carolina fan. Uh, so we're, we're ready to roll. Jay Wayne, how you doing? I'm just trying not to go full Stu Finer in this bitch because I'm just so excited and I don't want to let my homerdom get the best of me. But I mean, Travis Etienne, he's ready to roll. He's ready to roll. He's ready to roll. We got the winners. We got the winners. Run, 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 roll. Draft him. Draft him. Promises made. Win Fuck Javante Williams. Fuck Javante Williams. <laughs> Fuck Javante Will Youngs. Run, 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 roll. Fuck Javante. Fuck Javante Smith. Fuck all those guys. Travis Etienne. Promises made, promises delivered. Promises delivered. You want to beat the draft? You want to beat the book? Draft E T N. If you were with me, you're never gonna fucking forget it. Jesus Christ, we shouldn't have to be on here doing this, you know? Why we have to be here telling people to stop hating on Travis E T N? Please stop hating on Travis E T N because you're dumb. You're dumb <laughs> if you're hating on him and you're passing well, on him in your drafts. It's stupid. Quit so fucking it up. Was, it was percolating pre-draft that you know well there's all these problems with travis Etienne. now that there's some urban meyer quotes about the usage there's some more discord about it so we want to get into it real quick so i'm going to start off by saying i don't even like urban meyer like Mm -mm. he's got too much of a sort of slimy film on him that really turns me off there are skeletons in those in that closet for sure large walk-in closet tons of skeletons (laughs) Yeah, I'm not arguing. Sure. I don't love it either. So, I, you know, I don't even want him to succeed. And I really <laughs> want to hate this whole deal. But I can give credit to Urban for winning pretty much everywhere he goes. And in doing so, always being innovative on the offensive side of football, whether it was Bowling Green, uh, Utah, Florida and Ohio State, like just perpetually did his thing. Uh, you know, which perpetually quit all those programs for health reasons, too. I don't I don't know <laughs> for sure. Uh, but. You know, the innovative on offense is probably which, you know, that helps to lead to winning and also probably some of that slime residue that follows them around like a snail trail also had something to do with that as well. But that is neither here nor there. Uh, But what you have to like is that if if there's one thing that Urban is probably going to be successful at, whether or not he makes it a long time in this league, is that he is, again, very innovative on offense. He's he's going to spread you out. He's going to do his thing. And I will give him credit. Yeah, he's made some dumb mistakes. The Tebow thing's a little silly right now, but I'm not that mad about it. Do your thing. Pull Yo, your wrestling t- stunt. Pull your wrestling stunt and get get your guys in there and, and get everybody interested and jacked up about it. I don't know what you're up to. It's a 90 man roster. Who are you really taking a job from anyway? Well, the pe- people at work are talking to me about Tim Tebow. Exactly. The, there the it Jaguars. is. That's the pro right. wrestling move. Right. And and let me throw something else out there. You know, Urban mostly listens to that devil on his shoulder. Maybe he puts <laughs> Tebow over there to try, and, to try and balance that out, you know, maybe to counteract some of the other dumb moves he's made, like hiring a, a racist strength coach. You know, you get, you, you, you allegedly, mistake, allegedly, allegedly make that mistake. You get rid of it. And then you, Oh, let's bring in Tebow, you know, yeah. Tebow, which yeah. that probably wasn't even her Meyer. That was, that was con. That was Shaq Khan being uh, like, bring him in. They'll talk about us. People want to see the Jaguars, man. It's it's a good move for them. Hot topic in everybody's mouth right now. But I will say I'll give them credit for most of the hiring of the staff brought in a lot of guys who have been career pro football guys to kind of do and acclimate him to the league and kind of show him the ropes a little bit. But he uh, he has a clear vision of what he wants to do. So I'm not mad about that. That's what somebody in that position needs to be doing. And then he's going to let his guys do his thing. But he's going to show him the way uh, in this uh, part of the offseason and moving forward. Let's keep this thing moving along here. I do watch a healthy amount of college football, and I do happen to live in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, so Might that be unhealthy. Basically, yeah. Basically leads to watching a strong amount of Clemson games because they are typically on TV on the early games. Um, and then, of course, if they're the late feature game, of course, I'm watching that one. But I am by no means a Clemson Tiger fan uh, now. You know, we, we do have a resident Tiger fan here. I went but, there. OK, cut me a break. <laughs> but there are not too many teams in the country that I watch and say, 
you know, you have to give it to that guy. What do you do? And anytime that offense was sputtering or what, you know, they weren't crushing it and doing their thing, which they were a lot. Um, you got to give it to nine. I called him nine when I was in there, but it's, it's Travis Etienne, ET. He was that dude. And for him to be that dude, Clemson is always ripe with talent. So for him to be that dude is just incredible and speaks volumes to him. Now, you know, the only knock that I can come up with, like I've been saying, is that he's just been too good for too long. If this was last year, y'all boys would have been right. He would have been right up there with Jonathan Taylor, right up there with Clyde Edwards. And if he would have landed in a great landing spot, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Ah, <laughs> like you, we've got the winners ready to roll, <laughs> ready to roll. Yeah. Like I said, never in a million years would I thought I'd have to come on to this show and tell my listeners to not listen to hate on Travis Etienne. I would have never guessed that I'd have to be defending Travis Etienne as a football player. Never yeah. thought that would happen. He didn't, he didn't chuba it and have a bad seat like he was still right very solid and you know just a, just a good player all around and just a, a fantastic human being all right. around um, right this dude's so a stud I mean, off the field we'll get into it later yeah I, the the fact that everyone is now upset by what urban meyer is doing in the mini camp thing with with the reps like first of all it's fucking mini camp like settle Dude, down yeah it's several days but the fact that this is somehow terrible and even more of a reason not to like ETN is absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, I, I get it. There was some hate percolating before the draft. And then he's a first round running back. You can't do that, you idiots. Like, listen, the NFL has pretty much made an agreement at this point right now to say, hey, we're not drafting these guys that high anymore. But now we're, we're in the 20s or the top of the second round, late first round. Who gives a shit? If the guy's talented and can play, who fucking cares? Stop. Right. Like, fuck what off. What does it matter? Shut the fuck up. Like right. these players are difference makers and if, like take, take the running back in the late first round. That's fine. Like every, every PFF article you read about the draft analysts or whatever, or analysis and results is just hating on anybody that that's hating on the Steelers and hating on the Jags. Cause this is too high of a value. You can't, it'll never pay off at this value. Like shut up, shut up. They're difference makers. And, and Travis Etienne, it could be the they game can be difference touch. makers, just like every other player in the first round. It's like a 50 percent fucking bust rate. Stop. I got it. Like, we don't need to draft him one, two, ten overall. But at 20, 21, 23, 28, 31st, two, one, who fucking cares? Like you guys right. have kind of figured it out a little bit, dropped him back. These are talented guys that can be difference makers. Maybe they'll bust. Who knows? But and, and your offensive the tackle could bust. Henry Ruggs look like he sucks. Like. You know, what are we doing here? Quarterbacks, you can't figure that out. So, like, what what the fuck are we talking about here? Anyway, uh, let, let's keep this thing rolling. We, we get sidetracked. Um, I bet the I, Panthers and the Dallas Cowboys don't take back their pit, their early selections of Zeke and, and CMC. I bet they're very happy with what they got out of those guys. So Maybe just, they would, maybe they wouldn't. I don't know. Let's keep Regardless. it Regardless. Yeah. Right. So, really, like, let me get this straight. Y'all are so fucking mad. That an RB doesn't catch enough balls in college, and there's no way he could be good and figure that out. But now, my man, Travis Etienne, who is already an all-time ACC leading rusher. Not just a leading rusher in yards for the ACC, okay? He was a leading rusher in rushing touchdowns, total touchdowns, and total points, which is usually held by a kicker. That's how fucking phenomenal... Travis Etienne was in the ACC conference and overall in general. And if you want to say the ACC conference is a bad conference and is not great competition, I can give you that. But as a guy who watched literally every single game that Travis Etienne has ever played, this man was rarely playing in the third and fourth quarters because we were just beating the shit out of everybody. So he just shit it all over the ACC playing like half of the game. So just take, just, just, just take that for, for just let that sit. Yeah. So my man who is all that and the all time ACC leading rusher has already showed you how much work and effort he is willing to put in to become and improve on a potential weak spot in his game and become a much better receiving back after y'all were all so mad about that. He, well, this is what he couldn't do. He went out and just shut all that down. Now he's getting even more reps to make him even more of a threat and give him even more opportunities to get him more comfortable moving around to different spots on the field to put him in better positions to get the best matchup possible. And somehow, somehow, y'all are fucking mad. Stop. Stop, fucking stop it. it. 
Stop it. This is one of the hardest working, most humble individuals you will ever come across. He doesn't care about any of those individual statistics that we just rattled off like it was nothing. Just leading everything in the ACC, the history of the ACC. There's a lot of those accolades. He doesn't care. If you're talking to him, he will never bring any of that shit up. All he cares about is his team, and all yeah. he cares about is getting better. Every single offseason, he's improved aspects of his game. When he came into college, he's like, you need to improve your pass protection. So he went to work in the summer, in the, in the spring, in the summer to improve pass protection. Then the next next year, they're like, all right, you need to catch balls out of the backfield. Like We're going to need you to catch some balls out of the backfield. So he starts working on his receiving skills. And then that just blossoms each offseason into, into a bigger route tree. And, more, and, and, and credit Amari Rogers, who was the guy that was staying with him after practice catching balls off the jugs, working on hand exercises and drills and and just all these things. And then he goes out in his senior season and doubles his receiving production. He, he has 102 total catches over the career and 48 of them came in his senior season. Like, so you're seeing this work that he puts in pay off. Not to mention he came in at 190 pounds and, and left at 215, still running a 4-4. Yeah. He's just a freak who only cares about working hard and doing the right thing for his team. He doesn't care about individual accolades. This dude is a stud athlete with a fantastic work ethic. Yeah, I mean, like you Ready said. Ready to roll! He, Ready to roll! He doesn't care about the accolades, but in that ACC, and when I, I think they were playing... North Carolina State, he broke the record for ACC, um, the rushing record. And he was like, you know, I didn't really care. We were still losing. Like, all we cared about is getting that W. We can't, you know, this can't be a good achievement unless it's a W. Now, they, they came back and won the game. And he was like, you know, now, now it can be a good achievement for us. We got the W. This defines the team. Like, this is what I care about. So, like, uh, to your point, there's a lot of different people could have took that a lot of different ways. And, and Travis did his thing. All right. So. What this now all boils down to is there's a lot of different Urban Meyer quotes out there spinning in a different way. People spinning it in all sorts of directions. But what it boils down to was that Urban wanting this H back versatile piece, the Har Percy Harvins and Curtis Samuels of Urban's world, if you will. Um, now, in what world is he Percy Harvin? <laughs> yeah, well. Is he is is Travis Etienne Percy Harvin? No, of course not. But if you think that they are suddenly just going to solely play Travis Etienne at wide receiver and hit the gimmicky part of what he does, it's going to be twenty to forty carries a season. Nah, no, 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 no. You're insane. You're missing out. <laughs> a lot of do this is a stew finder episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, is Percy anywhere near? The level that Travis Etienne is in the backfield. Nah. Could they have just drafted a wide receiver? Sure. They could have found a receiving back. They could have done that, and they could have just found a receiving back later in the draft and, and drafted that, that late-round running back that everybody likes to jerk off about. But he would have been nowhere near the level of Travis Etienne in any part of his game. Like, what are we doing? Stop. I now, don't know. Yeah. Could they have just used... LaVisca Chenault as the Percy Harvin Curtis role? Sure. But instead, they said, let me get this fucking savage. Travis Etienne, who can house it from anywhere and do all sorts of things from any spots on the field. He is not just a running back. A quote from Robert Meyer, he's a slash, which is that kind of guy who could do everything what he wants him to do and smash home runs. And y'all are still mad. It, it, did, did it hurt your Visca takes? Did it hurt your Visca shares? I don't know. Is that why y'all are mad? I'm not sure. Look. I like Visca too. I said, Hey, go, go out. He's always had a guy like this. Visca fits that role. Like, but not nah, them boys went ahead and hit Travis ETN. And let's not pretend like the running back who isn't there. Isn't an undrafted free agent. Now they like him. They've been talking high about him. I think James Robinson's great. Um, but what we're doing here, we talk about it all the time, the transition to positionless football. And here we go. Travis ETN getting work at receiver, being able to move around and create the best mismatch on the field possible. And they can still keep James Robinson on the field and do all sorts of different things. It's just, it's crazy to me that y'all are still upset about this. The, the Travis ETN quote on this matter is football is a game of matchups. I feel like I can create a problem outside for a linebacker. We're just going to get the best matchup for us to go out there and make plays and do what's best for the team. Weird. I feel like if I really hone in on my skills and just keep working on it, work on my route running abilities and really focus on what the plan is and buy into that, we'll make plays. We're playmakers. Like Travis Etienne is focused 
on getting that mismatch, just like coach is focused on getting that mismatch. Like in what world do you think that he's just going to all of a sudden be a receiver? Because in rookie fucking mini camp, they let him have all the snaps at receiver. Like, stop. What the fuck are we doing here? Just, I know I've said it just, a million times already, but it, Jesus, they're just looking for so, anything to, to throw shade. And I just don't, I just don't get it, man, because this dude is a stud. He's just, he, He's just so electric and powerful and balanced. Oh, lateral agility, man. Yeah, how you, and, and they're penalizing him for being a north and south minded guy. You know, if you right. bounce it outside every time, we'd be really mad at you. Which you have the elite, elite athleticism to do, and he won't do it. Yes, sometimes he misses in the second level by maybe he, he could have cut or something, but he's mostly breaking that tackle anyways, and he's just trying to get more yards north and south. Like that's what you want from your running back. And and then right. to your point about like what Urban Meyer's looking for, like this is fantastic. They want him in the wide receiver room, and then he's going to be working his ass off to get better in that aspect because this means that they're going to scheme him touches, and you're going right. to scheme my man touches in space. It's going to be fucking fantastic. He was saying we, we we have a great stable. We have James Robinson. We have Carlos Hyde. Those guys can bang. But what we can do potentially with Travis Etienne is run two backs and split them out, send them right. out. Now he's running fucking routes and he's getting you PPR points. Are we not playing PPR? Are you upset that he's going to catch more balls? What the fuck are we talking about? Let's end the show because this is stupid. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's let's get we got we got a, we let, let's let's kick it back. And I, I know Alvin Kamara and and Latavius Murray or Mark Ingram is what people like to compare. And, and there could be, you know, some thing about that. I get it. He's not. It's not Sean Payton and it's not Drew Brees, but it is his college quarterback who, when you're in trouble and he knows him really well and Urban Meyer, let's act like Urban Meyer isn't a Sean Payton type of a guy in the college ranks. So let's not act like things can't be getting semi close to that. Now, Trevor's a rookie and, and so is the coach. So, you know, may take some time. Uh, but Alvin Kamara in his first season as a rookie had 120 attempts. Don't see a world where that doesn't happen for. Uh, it's going to be more. He, had seven, he has to be the floor, I would think. Had 728 yards, eight touchdowns, 6.1 yards per carry, 100 targets, 81 receptions, 826 yards, and five touchdowns through the air, averaging 10.2 yards per reception, and was the RB3, averaged 19.4 points per game. Look, I'm not saying that he's going to be Alvin Kamara's rookie year because he's not on the Saints. It's not Drew Brees, and it isn't Sean Payton. But, like, probably doesn't well, get 13 touchdowns, right? That's what that equated to. There, there's a, I'm not going to say definitely, but, like, Probably not. He doesn't get 14 touchdowns like right. That's probably not happened. Is he getting 100 targets? Probably not. But maybe he gets 80 targets and maybe he has 160 rushes attempts like right. I just like that was there's, that, and, that, those totals for Kamara equated to basically 200 plus just over 200 touches total. And I, I just don't see a world where ETN doesn't touch the ball more than 200 times. And right, I, it's like draft, said, capital, draft capital, draft capital, draft capital, draft capital, draft capital. <laughs> You guys jerk off over it while it's here. It's all that matters for running backs, but a team's stupid if they spend high draft capital on them. I'm like, what? Look, with all that, Alvin Kamara was the RB3 on the year. I'm Don't not saying need that. ETN to be RB3. Right. I'm I don't not need him to be RB3. Be. Right. Like, he RB could be. He could be just, just portions of that and have, have an okay season and still be RB12, 15, 10, 5. 16. It doesn't matter. All of those outcomes are fucking fantastic for drafting Travis Etienne in your rookie draft. Like, I'm not upset about that. And he's a rookie. Like, James Robinson is an undrafted free agent. He's a restricted free agent after next year, I believe. Like, what, 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 what? Like, what, what are we doing? Peak Percy Harvin, 100, peak Percy Harvin, 121 targets, 87 receptions, 967 yards, three touchdowns, 52 carries, 345 yards, and two more touchdowns. So five touchdowns total. Like, yeah, is ET going to see 121 targets? No, probably not. But is he going to see 52 carries? Unless his fucking legs fall off, he's going to see 150 carries, 120 carries. Like, there, I just can't see a world where he doesn't get to 100 carry, 100. 20 or 120 attempts like god this this is like this is a perfect scenario that could be percolating here and and everybody right. is so upset about it because there's there's could already be just the some, one one right now if people were looking at it that way and it's just not the case right but again i was just like 
you guys are so mad at the the Jordan Howards and the Nick Chubbs and the, all these other guys who don't catch passes. But now we're we're cr- maybe maybe just inching closer and closer to positionless football where ETN's moving around and is a guy who can get it done. I'm not saying he's going to be an elite receiver, but there he is in Percy Harvin was in no way the running back he was. And in my opinion, you could probably figure out how to run a couple of routes a little more effectively than anybody could switch to running back. So like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? What we're doing, what, what, what I want you guys to do is not pass on ETN in your rookie draft. We're on the record saying take take Harris 1-1. One, one. I'm I'm cool with you doing that. Won't argue against you. I'm going to take ET. I went to Clemson. I'm going to take ET 1-1. One, one. But at 1-2, right, we're all in agreement to take Travis ETN. If you want to take Chase, if you want to take Pitts, go for it. I can't be mad. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to talk shit. But what I am going to do is immediately go to the next guy who has the next pick and be like, yo, let me get this pick. Right. Sure. Because like when a guy gets pushed down the board, even slightly, it creates some doubt. And if a guy was already on the fence and here's all this hate that ETN is no lateral agility and they're not going to play him a running back. I mean, like whatever. If there's any doubt in that guy who's at one four or one five and, and, and all of a sudden four guys, have three guys have passed on ET, four guys have passed on ET. Like, what do they know that I don't know? I was already on the fence. Maybe I don't take him. That's when you try to pounce and get that pick so that you can take ET. And it's even more of a value in Superflex because the quarterbacks are pushing that value down even further. And it's just, you don't have to trade for one, two anymore. You don't have to trade for one, three. You could trade for one, four, one, five. And even some instances, people are taking Devonta Smith over him and Jalen Waddle. I've seen draft that. Draft ETN, draft ETN, draft ETN. Fuck Javante Williams. Fuck Javante Williams. Fuck Javante Smith. Draft ETN. Win your draft. Beat the book. Draft ETN. Shit on your fantasy f- opponents. Let's end this show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Appreciate y'all. You got anything else? Nah. All right. <laughs>